you've all seen the... See, she destroyed that. That little voice destroyed the comfortableness. <laughs> <laughs> and that was awkward. That was awkward. So, okay, obviously the past, uh, it was yesterday and really kind of shot, shot out there um, was there's a video going around of a girl being attacked. And then obviously I've got Andy here with me and uh, we're going to just go through the the events, uh, the 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 benefits of uh, the likes of jiu-jitsu or any form of self-defense. So I want to say, Congratulations for what you've done. You've done what a lot of people wouldn't do. That girl was very lucky you were there at that time because if you weren't, God knows how it would have gone. Um, so how are you anyways? Um, how is things? I'd say it's a whirlwind. I'm seeing this video. Every platform I go on, this video is on, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Like there's English uh, pages and things posting this now as well. Like how, how does it feel? I, I, I feel it, it, no, it feels surreal and it's it's crazy that it is actually going around the world. I've 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 heard um people uh, speaking from Bulgaria, Australia, Florida, uh yeah, all across America actually, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's 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 great the exposure it's it's getting to talk about the the benefits of of of, of training jiu jitsu and and becoming confident enough to to do something like what I did without a hesitation you know um yeah yeah so it, it feels it feels great and uh I th it's a lot of fun talking to the naysayers about the um, authenticity of the video and the, the genuine reasoning behind it I'm like it, it, it was it was such a um quick thing to do um to to to, to, to quickly turn around into the car park and realizing that there's going to be some sort of situation you have to take uh, uh, to, to take charge of because the way I saw it when I came around to the car park she, she, he was uh, peering over her uh, she was up against the back of the wall there was it didn't seem like any touchy thing at, at, at the at straight away but I did notice that he did turn and noticed that I drove in but still just continued ignoring the fact that that that's anyway someone is here and he wants to do whatever he was doing by the time I, I turn slightly more around to the car park I had to do like a um um a 75 degree uh, turn rather than 100 percent around uh, 75 percent all the way around um by the time I turned around he'd already started hitting her um while I was getting my shoes on. So I knew I had to get out. I knew I'd have to open the door while putting my last shoe on, while putting my phone on the dash, while sliding record all at the same time in that second to get out of the car. Um, so some people are saying, oh, I had to take my time to set up a camera and stuff like that. But I also had to think of how to protect myself in case I... Um, get wrong, wrongly uh, 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 accused of something. Um, I knew what I was going to do to this guy. Uh, he's already hitting on a small woman. This guy needs to be stopped. So I um, very much in, enjoyed running over there to stop it. I love playing jiu-jitsu and this was somebody who clearly doesn't know jiu-jitsu and uh, just love folding people up like that. Yeah, and obviously yeah. you do training every day, but did you ever envision that you'd have to do it in a real life situation like this? And and when you got to the situation, was it a bit surreal? Because when you come to situations like that, you're like, is this really happening? Is is like, is this about to go down? Do I need to do something? When you first kind of pulled up, were you like, fuck, right now well, something has to be done, or was it more anger? We we didn't actually. Um, I did. I didn't let you know before, but this is not the first time. Um. <laughs> believe it or not uh, that, that I had to intervene with somebody and I, I knew this time that I had to do a better job recording it I did actually try and record the first time uh, which was a crazy situation and it was related to not getting enough rounds in my second class that day um, in the evening class um, my, my girlfriend called me uh, to say that she wants me to pick her up so I was a little bit late uh um, uh, because I was doing a second class that day, and I and I knew that's a little bit too much to take the piss, like you know, 
I needed to go over, spend time with the girlfriend, collect her. And um, so I left the class late. Uh, sorry, I left the class still in my gi, just take off the the, 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 the gi top, and jumped into my van and uh, a race to, to collect her. And then we're going home. And we noticed there's a police chase that passes us. Um, and the car flies past us. I thought it was just somebody just harassing me on, on, on that road to try and get out of the way. But then the police car goes past. I said, oh, just, this is a chase. So I set the camera up on the cradle on the dash. Let's record this. It's just something interesting. It's my reaction to something interesting. We record that, you know, it, it might, might make some sort of entertainment on Instagram, at least. I, I like to make videos, you know. Um, so that's part of also one of the reasons why I set up the camera so quickly as well. Because who knows, this could also be an interesting Instagram video. Simple as that. But um, um, going back to the car chase, um, soon down the road, this 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 ended in, in a crash where he veered across the lane over the concrete and side plowed into um, um, like a, an X5 Jeep with a lady in it. And all of the front of the driver's side was all crushed in. I and mean, the car was completely uh, destroyed. Uh, so he's really damaged somebody. But then, like, by the time I get up there, I see that that he's crashed into, um, uh, you know, the nearby fence and hedge. And he's got out of the car and he's run out of there. Uh, and then the police car finally, uh, there's only one guard in there. And I kind of described him as one lone skinny guard. And I thought this is not a right situation. It doesn't calculate, right? <laughs> because I, I still feel like I didn't get enough rounds. I'm still wearing my gi trousers. And uh, I know I can get this guy. <laughs> so I, I care, this is at Norton Cross, um, uh, just at the Hilton up there. So I, I pulled up onto the path and left the girlfriend there. And obviously she's saying, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. So I said, I'll be back in a second. So meanwhile, she's stuck worrying, looking at the accidents, looking at the emergency uh, services, sort of uh, all come to life, which is probably pretty traumatic that she had to sit there and watch all that, not knowing what I was up to. And what I was up to was I was trying to track the guys that ran into the guy, the, the two of the guys uh, that ran into the industrial estate uh, where Bewley's is. And uh Eventually, they ran all the way into the back corner, uh, and I had to stop and listen, and it was stormy night. It was windy night. I had to look for signs because I had no idea which direction they were going. So I had to sort of try and figure out how to make it up, and I was kind of listening to things, looking for flashes the flashlights, and all these little things got me to get them in the far, 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 far corner. And um, when I was finally running down the long end of, of Beauty's factory, there's a big mound of grass, uh, you know, just before the fence. And um, I could see them at the very, very end of the mound. And the, gu the guard I had, the guy up against the fence and the torch was batting saying, stay there, you know. So this was, this, I knew I was going to be doing something. So I'm running uh, now. So I decided to go run up onto the grass mound. And then I'd, I, I, as, as I was up there, I was like surveying and watching seeing what I was going to do coming and what I was going to do was come run around and get some speed in there and do it in a serious uh, rough and uh, double arm takedown <laughs> around the hips and, and just totally plow him down to the ground. And then I took his back and very similar to, the, to, to this one last night. Um, um, I took his back, took the hook in, but I trapped an arm as well. I have to trap an arm. Because it always look it's always better when you're taking the back, trapping an arm, holding the seatbelt on, and then I put the rear, ne rear naked choke hold on him. Because the guard was there, because the guard was there, there was no need to put him to sleep. Uh, I, I I realize that in reflection now because this time I just put the choke on a little bit, and then I hear him saying, "Okay, I give up, I give up." That's exactly what he said, exactly like that as well. <laughs> that was funny. I thought it was really funny. Um, so, yeah, then we just um, um, turned him around. I accidentally took his took mount for extra points for some um, behavioral um, getting around memory. <laughs> yeah, get the points in. But but 
but then I said, like, I said, why well, am I, on, you know, I need, to, I need to turn you around. So, but then we turned around and then uh, uh, he was able to get arrested and get taken out of there. So different circumstance, same me uh, doing what I, what I would do. And um, yeah, go, that's, going, going back to, to, to this um, recent one. Um, when I left there, I left it there because he was asleep. He's subdued. And he was the threat, and I didn't know how soon uh, he would wake up. He was breathing for sure, but uh, obviously I needed to get uh, both of us out of there. Uh, I'd already told her to run down the road, um, and uh, so I got out of there. And as soon as I get out of the car park, I I see that she's she's still running and still panicking and still crying, um, just the way she is in the video, which is. Pretty horrible, I have to say. The horrible thing about this video is listening back to that so many times now. Uh, um, but she's still, she's still making those screams, and I, and I pull over and uh, I convince her to, to, to get in. She's she's relieved to see me, and she gets in pretty quickly. And then I bring her off. Uh, we take, get a breeder, and then we figure out what's happening for her, for herself. And I ask her all the questions, like like uh, you know, how do you know him? How'd you get back there? You know um what happened what was going on um but uh she was saying that that he was trying to rob her um and uh and then he tried to beat uh, beat her up and she was more concerned about the lump on her head um from one of the thumps that that that, that he gave her um and she was very concerned about checking that out in the mirror but um yeah she was she was very highly strung for a while um it took her a while to calm down and then eventually we uh, we called a lot of her friends uh, to see who would take her in that night. But um, part of the plan, part of the contemplation of the plan was to possibly take her to Limerick. She's from Limerick. I was thinking about doing that, but I was getting really, really tired. And uh, both decided it was best to bring her to Bus Aris. And um, there she can get a bus as soon as possible. And there's plenty of people there when I dropped her off. Uh, so she was safe. She was safe there, you know. There was plenty of people already queuing up for the early morning bus. Yeah, and like I said, fair play to you. Like this stuff like this happens all the time. You, obviously, you were able to have the camera there to see it. And a lot of the times when stuff like this goes on, a lot of people go, That might be domestic, and they kind of leave situations like that. I've noticed now. Um, mm. do you think we obviously doing jujitsu? Me, I looked through my messages. Me and you were actually supposed to have an interview about two years ago, but obviously yeah. whatever happened with me there, that didn't happen. But because you've done the Alta program, I am correct. Yeah. yeah so you've done that yeah. and now you continue to do jits. Do you think doing that course and, and the jits from then gave you the confidence knowing that you could go up and, and take someone like that? Because most people don't know the likes of jiu-jitsu. Well, I don't, put, put it this way. I, um, you reminded me that the first time I inter, in, intervened in any sort of security thing, uh, I, was, I was a security guard at a concert and I saw a domestic and I also intervened really quick, but I was like a 19 year old security guard there, but with no sort of proper martial arts training or anything like that. I was, um, I think I was a fresh recruit at the time uh, in the army. And this was just an extra job I had on the weekend. But um, but definitely training, tra training out there um, was able to give me the skill set to, to see what, what what suits me in the gym. The reason why I did out there was when I joined the SPG, I did a few months of training and I felt a little bit lost of which class this is, which classes should I do and where am I going to go with this? And then when it was Wimp the Warrior at the time, when Wimp the Warrior came up, um, that I, I looked at that like an apprenticeship course in MMA. Uh, so let's go do um, train out there and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, and I loved it. It was absolutely great. The, 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 the crack you have with everybody uh i went up against um uh oh gary second name fucking is gone from my head the beard uh, the longest hair yeah, yeah i don't i no. don't know the name either because i don't think his actual second name is the one he has on instagram he was vtech gary something VTEC was his fight name anyway, like Honda VTEC. I'm sorry, Gary, for forgetting your second name right now. It's the first time ever. But uh, 
all we went through different stages of crazy relationships through, through that but we had a, a great fight at the end of it um and uh, yeah I, we're, we're good friends still but we you make loads of friends there and then i was able to see what suits me in in in, in uh, sbg and i was able to i was able i was i was, I was more suited to jiu-jitsu i was afraid of mma to be honest i was afraid of all the punching stuff like that even even though i loved it and one um and um yeah how vicious it was i was very surprised at how how vicious uh uh the, the fight could be because i i know some of the crazy punches i gave gary um were a little bit on the out flush knuckled side um and and this was this was meant to hurt him to stop him uh i was purposely trying to do something that would hurt him to stop him but the big raw bastard didn't want to and i was so surprised that i could inflict this amount of pain and this guy was take it you know it's very very surprising um so i guess mma was a little bit um uh, was scary to me then you know so for years i just trained jiu-jitsu and i wanted to get i just loved it um i'm like gustavo what what uh borges was the main coach there for years and we became really good friends we're still very close today and he's uh Head coach in um U uh UFC Fit Doral in Florida, Miami, living the life he is, the fecker. But anyway, uh, we we miss him here, and uh, I was always in the lunchtime class there, and we started a WhatsApp group and and um, for the lunchtime uh, class, and that became very uh, friendly. We did barbecues, everybody became really really close to class and was great so you, you couldn't not mi- want to miss any days um so yeah learned a lot with gustavo and um uh, uh but throughout that time i i i, I wanted to do more competitions because he pushed me to do more competitions i did the euros uh in france uh, not february last year february before or could have been february last year um and i never took i never really I never, I, I didn't, I took for granted how, how big that stage was. And I just went over to Paris to do another competition. <laughs> <laughs> the Euros are quite big now. I really didn't care too much. But uh, I totally expected to win as well. Uh, I did a great um, a five, five week training camp with, with, uh, with Will. Um, my, um, why are second names eluding me? My coach will. Will Flory. No, no, no. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> You're forgetting everyone's name today. No, it's terrible. Ah, uh, this is no. It's insulting, is what it is. <laughs> will Walsh. Um, let me get that back in the right angle. With my coach Will, Will Walsh, we did a we had a five week training camp to get me from a fat. 105 kilos down to super heavyweight because I hate competing at ultra heavyweight. They're all too heavy and you can't do, you can't do your best. Um, Sorry. Uh, getting a the call there. It's gone now. Um, so uh, he was able to get, he was able to change a um, hell of a lot in my, in my training, in my strength and conditioning. It, it was brilliant. I, I got really strong and I lost a lot of fat. And I was able to, um, cut a long story short, I was able to get down to 94.6 kilos the morning of the competition after some drastic things that I had to do, uh, do doing a weight cut, including vodka <laughs> the night before. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> which was the fun part as well. It helped me sleep. Um, uh, but but the weighing in, weighing in, weighing in at 98 and a half kilos um, in the gi, I, I, and and all I had to do was be less than 100 kilos, and I, I felt great. I felt absolutely great. I won my first match, but because of a dodgy meal the night before, uh, in a local Indian Parisian restaurant, uh, which I thought was very simple, plain chicken rice food with no sauce, uh, I wasn't able to uh, properly fight. Uh, a triangle that I was put into for the second time uh, during this round with um, a, a well, a well-competed American 
wrestler guy that I was up against. He was pretty tough. And I, and I really thought I was going to do well with him. But you can never trust... You can never trust a fart in a brand new gi. You know? <laughs> no. A white, a brand new King's white gi. So I, I couldn't, I, I had to tap, fortunately. And uh, for that, I got third in my category. Um, But then I did go on to, to go on the absolute and I won one there. And then I faced the same guy again in the absolute. Uh, and then we had another match. And I think it just... Ran out of time. He bet me by one point, maybe. I could be wrong by that. But it's pretty close. But at least that, by that time, my stomach had sorted itself out. So my advice to people is eat clean the night before competition. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, the, the white gee, no, you're all right. You're better off than that. <laughs> and you, yeah. Because otherwise, you're going to be a video for a whole other reason that you're not going to like as much. <laughs> oh, no, and cameras everywhere, you know. I, <laughs> two angles on the mat, I think, you know. Um, but uh, it was it was great crack. Uh, I will go back and compete uh, in, in those big stages. I'm looking forward to it because I'm feeling great now. I've, um, doing intermittent fasting for the past five six months and changed my diet altogether and i've lost um i've lost about 12 maybe 14 kilos or so kept it off uh, and, and it feels great to, to keep this sort of this lump of fat off over this lump of time um so yeah um i'm, I'm very much uh signing up to competitions lately yeah no. That's good. That's good. And and like that, getting the fat off, not that it's easy. You can race there, but trying to maintain it is then the, the hardest part is, especially if you're a big eater or you have a sweet too, or um, the well, discipline to maintain it over a long period of time. So fair play. Thank you. Thank you. I know the, the biggest thing is finally realizing that a, a fat lad doesn't need to keep on eating carbs. You know, you know, you, you, you need to burn your fat. So you have to stop uh, making those uh, sugars from the carbs. And so I'm, I'm really, really, I'm like for a long time, I was in my long fasts were, were 20 hours, four hours eating. But really, I would just have one big meal of lots of steak or high pro, you know, lots of chicken. And uh, then that amount got smaller and smaller. So then I, it was very obvious that my energy has been burnt from my fat because those ketones are, are are being used rather than the uh rather than my blood sugar being spiked so i've really learned so much uh re over this period changing things like that i'm feeling great and looking forward to continuing and now will watch has given me uh uh he says he's given me a the um, he told me today that that he's created a scholarship in my name for heroic acts like this and he has um, awarded me the first prize uh, of this scholarship for one month free online coaching with Will. So I'm really, really happy to take that. So we're, we're going to chisel me out over the next few we uh, weeks. And uh, there's going to be a few competitions done in that time. Yeah, no, I, look, <laughs> I look forward to because I, I will, when there's more Altas on, I might get you on again. And we'll actually do a, a bigger kind of interview if you'd be interested about the Alta, the benefits, obviously. Today's interview was to talk about what, like the heroic stuff that you've done. I don't, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, you're glad. I don't mind. I'd, I'd rather have the chat. Now I know a little bit more about you, but I would be interested in talking to you again about Alta in general and kind of promoting the, the program as a whole. But as for what you've done this week, I just want to say fair play to you. Um, a lot of people might have, it's fight or flight. You chose to fight. Um, don't mind the naysayers to hear like, you're always going to have people that are going to go against you. You just need to keep doing what you've done. You've done a fantastic thing. You saved someone uh, from potentially being badly beaten or, or whatever else. And you should be immensely proud of yourself. And I'm glad that video has gone viral of, of something good happening. Fuck the people who say stage. People are going to believe what they yeah. want to believe. We know what we yeah. know. And you're you're an absolute hero, my friend. Thank you, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Perfect. I gotta let you go. I want to thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you want to say before you go? Um, no, it's I I think it's just really important that people, uh, you know, drop what they think about martial arts and give it a try. It's it's really not as crazy as as 
as as as you may fear, I did fear it before, and I only started when I was thirty two. And during COVID, I did feck all. So I've learned so much in this short amount of time. Um, and uh, SPG is a great home. In fact, I signed up for life. <laughs> uh, I did, yeah, yeah. So um, that's that's how confident I am in SPG. I am uh, part of that forever, and I fully intend to be. Um, training there forever. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic gym, and and like that, if anyone it does want to learn about self defense, there is obviously SPGs. There will be other gyms closer to you, like Andy has said. These gyms aren't what you expect. When you go in, the people are probably the nicest, most humble people. And it's nothing to be afraid. There's always going to be that overwhelming thing when you go in. But if anyone wants to find a gym that's close to them, they can message me because obviously I know most of the gyms within the country. Um, I think it's essential that you should all do. I'm actually going to try and do something now myself uh, because, yeah. of it, because it can happen anywhere, anytime. Get an open mat somewhere. I'm like, I also try and encourage a lot of, a lot of my friends to go to open mat. I try to go to open mat every weekend somewhere different, maybe, you know, um, and uh, to, to let it, to let people know as well, a lot of open mat everywhere is 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 usually free, but it's always good to ask if if there's a drop in rate or not for open mat. But um, it's 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 just so easy to get out there and train. So, which open mat are we going to? <laughs> I don't know. It is what you. There's usually one every Sunday in the majority of gyms. I want to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. And Saturday, yeah, yeah. There's and no Saturday. Saturday. Um, yeah. I'll be away this Saturday anyway, so because I'm at Cage Conflict, but I'll be around <laughs> Sunday maybe. Um, but yeah, no. Congratulations on everything you've done. Uh, we'll we'll come back to the Alta when the Alta I, is there. An Alta running at the minute when the Alta is kind of coming to the end. I think there is, yeah. Um, I think there is. We, I'm not, not sure exactly where they are. Um, in terms of their 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 course. Um, but I love it. It's great. Um. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the altas, one one of my finals. Uh, that one of the mad things was about being into alta thing. You can be called upon to take uh take take a spot for somebody dropping out at any moment, and uh, I I might hold the record for the latest notice, uh, to to step in. Did you ever hear this? No. I, I was I was at one of the finals spectating. <laughs> and it was only um I think it was about thirty five minutes or so uh from the main event and the main event the other guy dropped out uh, but the doctor uh, dropped him out for for I think it was high blood pressure or something like that. Um uh, but anyway, Wayne McCabe, if you know him, um uh yeah uh, he uh, he he was uh, he was warming up the lads there, my, my, my mate, and he says, oh, my mate will, uh, he'll do it. And he volunteered me and he said to Joe straight away, Andy will do it. Uh, and then, look, this community is great. I, I, I purposely left my gym bag at home, promising the girlfriend I wouldn't do anything crazy. Uh, and my gum guard and everything like that, which is sacred to me and when I fight. Um, I would have preferred to use it the other night, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, the, the, everybody got got uh, got everything together for me, including the gum guard, and uh, and we remolded it and everything to fit to fit around my teeth. I had braces at the time, and within thirty five minutes, I was in there main event. We went three rounds. It was friggin' awesome, uh, and we had so much fun. And the guy really appreciated it as well. You know, I didn't want to hit, let him and his family down, um, but also I had to I had to rear naked choke at him as well. Uh, yeah. Which is my go-to, um, but it's not my only move. Uh, for my competitors out there who are listening, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a, you're you're partial to now rear naked, and, and that's a fantastic story. Like I said, I'll get you on again. We'll we'll talk more about the alta kind of start finish the feelings through sure. it all, all that sort of stuff. But for now, you're an absolute hero. Thank you so much for your time, and wishing you. you all the best going forward. And we'll talk again very soon. Okay, cheers, bud. Take care.